So let's start. So, um, in fact, we we'll, we like to start this presentation, this talk about the question of uh, building uh, architecture with nature, with this picture, with this picture from Franco Fontana, around uh, 85, 1985, which uh, everybody says when they look at these pictures, what a nice landscape. But uh, when we when we closely look uh, at this picture, we can see that this landscape is in a way very nice there are really lines there are, it's really composed but it looks a little bit poor like you have this agriculture mono agriculture on the first ground and then on the second plan you really have these these trees planted very regularly so we can imagine that even this is a countryside we can we can we can imagine that there is not a lot of biodiversity in this image and we like to compare to this image uh, which was taken on the on the on the roof of a school in uh, Boulogne. And uh, I will show you the, the, the project after, but uh, we, we had the very uh, last uh, recensement and we found that more than 500 uh, types of different species on the roof of this, of, of this, uh, of this school. So we like to, to show these two different images. One in this, the country, the second one is on the top of a building in the city. And also, when we look at this great picture from Andreas Gurski from uh, 2017, where you can see the cities of Tokyo, we can ask ourselves of what will be the cities of tomorrow regarding the idea that uh, uh, two thirds of the people will live in the city in 2050, what is uh, some specialists are saying that. So we really have to, 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 to say that the design of the city, that the life of the city must be shared not only for human, but also for non-human living. So that's uh, the, the, the point of our, of our talk. Here we start with the simple way to bring nature in the city, the most simple, the most evidence uh, that uh, every every architect is doing maybe, to something more complex and more and more uh, experimental. So here we start with a simple project of social housing that we built it a couple of years ago. And this is a roof, this is a roof. Uh, a, a flat roof for people living in this uh, in this in this project where they can meet here yeah. how do you can really digitalize uh, courtyards roof uh, trying to put people together and we like this idea that suddenly people are living in this project and they are gathering gardening architecture and we like this idea that also uh, putting some green courtyards or green roof make the idea that once is good for biodiversity but secondly is good also for people because they are acting in the project they are not like only clients project is not a product architecture is not a product and we like this idea that uh, people are taking part of, of it this is a second project in pontin in the near of uh, in the near, uh, in not, not too far from paris and also the question of the garden is really important uh, on the on the ground floor at the top of the housings uh, so that really it's a part of the common life and common life and vegetation is really uh, part of the same concept. So again, that these first these first two projects were really a, a, a very straight and simple approach, but which shows that even uh, uh, these places of roofs and and, and courtyards has to be uh, considered as a, a, a vegetation a place for vegetation and also for animals. A second project which is a little bit different. Because then it's not a program, I will show you, uh, where we had some uh, housings and then we put a garden. Here, what is more uh, specific on this project, it's um, a university of law in Paris, is that the garden, the landscape, is the first act of the project. So we really started to, to work on this garden, this slopey garden, and to make it the heart and the, 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 the first concept of the project. So we had to renew these two buildings here, which were some old barracks for army guys. And then we had to take uh, care of this place in the middle. So we just create a slopey garden here where people can enter 
this uh, this 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 gallery that links the two buildings. And so here we had a lot of different types of garden in the in the hearse, really, and also in the roof of this of this particularity here uh, project. So here you can see really the garden has the first guide of the project, which is maybe the second level of using vegetation to conceive architecture. So we can see the, that students on the morning, they are really trying to, they are really uh, traveling to this entrance and then linking the two projects, the two, the two, the two buildings here. So we have this, this part of the landscape and then here also on the roof of the, of the project. Using also this um, rusted steel material, which is really a material that you use in that you use in landscape, and so our view inside. I just show these pictures also to show that uh, the project was built in an old parking. So uh, this auditorium takes place in an old parking. We didn't uh, dig too much on under the ground. So this is really the second level using landscape at the first approach. A third one is uh, this school in uh, Ivry that we built uh, uh, seven or eight years ago, which, you know, in France, uh, school has always very low program, like one, two, three stories maximum. So we decided to use the roof as another part of the building, saying that we have here the opportunity not only to make a green roof, but to make a new space for, for the kids, and that really these roofs become 3,000 square meters of, of program, of more program for the kids. So they can go out, they can really travel on these roofs, and it's really uh, one's uh, a place for biodiversity, but the second one also real a place for the for the for the kids to learn. Not only in the courtyard on the ground floor, but really also on those rooms. And we started to like designing our architecture. I mean, drawing architecture as well as the plants on the roof. And you see, we really like these plants, so that you can see that. We designed the, 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 the plans as well as the architecture. And everything is part of one drawing and of one of big concept. So if you can see also these images from the classroom that goes, that, that, that see outside on the, on, the, on the part of the roof. Uh, another pictures, you see the classroom, you see outside. Is it a roof? Is it the ground? Where are we? And then suddenly you have this glass out where the kids can go out. So we really think in, in another way that this is good for uh, heat insulation, also for uh, retaining water. But also here, this is becoming something more, a different program where kids can go out. And suddenly, then we started to use vegetation to climb on the building here on the sunshade. So it was really reusing also a vegetation as a tool for thermal insulation or regulation. Because in the winter, of course, uh, the ray of light, the ray of the sun comes into the classroom. But in summer, when the vegetation grows, then suddenly it makes a natural sunshade in the classroom. So then we have another levels of using vegetation, not only for social, not only for biodiversity, but also for the regulation of the building. So this is also very interesting that the vegetation has many, many uh, goals uh, in, into, the, into the building. And here we should uh, uh, speak about this sentence that we really like at the office, which says, uh, it's a sentence for Colin, Colin Moorcraft, who was an architect, uh, and uh, some say that he really invented the concept of permaculture, uh, which say that each element should, wherever possible, be capable of performing more than one function. And conversely, each function should be performable in more than one way. So that, you know, this is the definition of permaculture. So that when you're using something, you, it should not be only for one purpose, but really, uh, be used at many, many uh, way in many, many different way on the on the on the on the buildings. So one last pictures of this roof, which are quite light, uh, let, letting this vegetation grow and having uh, a different uh, spaces for for kids. Uh, maybe I should um, uh, drop on another level of. Uh, uh, um, 
thinking this question of, uh, of uh, vegetation, which comes into the concept of facade. You saw these last uh, things into the school when the vegetation start to grow on the sunshade. This is the headquarter of the hospital of Paris in the uh, in one hospital. So it's uh, it's the end of the construction. So you see only uh, images, though the building is not quite finished. So we use this great uh, outside space for every 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 offices. But I, I want to show you that the, the project was divided into one half is this uh, triangular uh, office building and the other part is a, is, a, is a garden, but it's a garden on top of an auditorium. So it's a garden on top of a program. And what was really interesting also is that we conceived this green roof, but also this uh, facade that, was, that connected the garden to the ground. And here, uh, it was really a, a, a nice work that we've done with the uh, with, um, with factory, with the uh, entreprise, with the builders, is that we, we conceived a new system that is about the biodiversity war that we quite, I wouldn't say event at the office, but we developed since a couple of years. The idea is how do you create a vertical soil? We know this question of horizontal green roof, but we think in the future of the city that we maybe have to think about creating a link between the earth, the green roof, and then suddenly you have something linking the two, which is really kind of a vertical soil. So this was really, um, uh, this is a, a system that we invent at the office. And I, I just want to show you first this project because th this is a, a, a first uh, uh, invention that we had here. These are the prototype that we made. So you have really basically uh, two concrete grid and then the soil in the middle, which is uh, maintained by different system, structural system. And this was the construction here when you can see that uh, they plant like 5,000 different kinds of, uh, of plants in the wall, first week after, and then now it's getting better and better. So this is really a way to create this vertical soil. In the city, everything is dense, everything is vertical. And then this is after a couple of months, uh, the, the project is not quite yet finished, but it's, it's really promising for us and it's really getting more and more interesting to, 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 to keeping this, uh, this soil. So, what is interesting here is that suddenly the facade, the vertical, the verticality in the building has not only one, um, has not only one goal, which is uh, the thermal insulation and then closing the building, but it's it's also a place for biodiversity. And for example, I would show you another project that we are working on. Um, maybe it should have come a little bit earlier, but it's not a, a big deal. So the, this is a. a, a uh, a logistic center in uh, Vitry-sur-Seine, not so far from Paris, where we decide also that the thickness of the facade has to play a role for the environment. So we just decided that you have this logistic center, and then the facade here had an offset uh, for three, four, five meters, so that we can really put some vegetation in between the facade and the street here. So that at the end, we just uh, decided to take this part of the of the of the ecoton of the of the which is the ecological transition zone between two ecosystems and then putting this into this in between so really then the facade the facade is becoming the thickness of the facade is becoming something really interesting so that you have the the street you have the facade and then suddenly this dom domestic facade, this northern exposure, brings something to the people, which is uh, good for the regulation of the heat island, for the biodiversity, and suddenly in the western exposure is getting uh, thicker and thicker, so that you had one program into the project, and we create this uh, this, 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 this grid uh, which supports the, the vegetal, the vertical vegetation. And so this is the facade of the project we are proposing, which is very huge. We see 30,000 square meters, but suddenly the facade, which was which is not only one plan that is beginning thick, and this thickness has something to to bring more than just thermal in, in insulation. 
uh, a project that uh, we won a couple of years ago, which was uh, lost uh, because uh, the project stopped. It, it happened sometime just to show uh, the, that also I was speaking to you about thickness, about what the thickness can bring to people uh, and also to biodiversity. Because imagine these great balconies outside this uh, outside this uh, apartment. Then suddenly this is one outside space, but this is also a space to share with vegetation. So maybe this is not as technical as the other you say, but uh, this this outside space. Uh, we work with uh, uh, these uh, famous landscape architects from Denmark, SLA, Ar SLA landscape architect, and trying really to change also the depth, the, th the depth of this uh, vegetalized space, so that it, it, it's making different landscape uh, in front of your apartment, so that the thickness of this facade brings use for people and also for the vegetation. But all of this started when I, if I want to 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 go into a, a different level of uh, using this uh, biodiversity, started with this biodiversity school in Boulogne that we built it in uh, like four or five years ago. Uh, we finished uh, the the construction. Um, we had to build this house in the center, in the middle of a very dense area. Uh, so uh, the city asked us to think of a green roof on the top of this building. So we first uh, answer to this question with the competition, creating this very intense green roof on the top of the building with 20 centimeters of uh, earth here, of soil, 50 here, and then almost one meter under the little forest, which is here. So. Uh, using the roof as a landscape has also a, pedag a pedag um, pedagogical tool with uh, for for the kids. So imagine these ramps uh, where the kids are, are are going, and this outside space, which is almost like this every school I showed you a little bit earlier. Outside space, which is not only uh playing give, give, <clears throat> exterior place for to to play for kids but it's also a place for diversity <coughs> sorry you see the connection for the exterior space for the school and then they can grow on here they can go on the on the on the on their roof uh, almost climbing the project we like this approach also that this uh, this is between architecture and landscape, a programmed landscape or inhabited landscape. We really like this idea that uh, we are really in between with this project. And then you see this ramp and the kids can grow and then access to the, um, to the green roof. We see here from another angle where the kids can really use the roof and then suddenly become a citizen of the architecture and act on the architecture, not only using this, as I said before, has a product, has a machine, but really being actors and, and, and can really use the, the, the project. But in a way, I'm, I want to say this is, we know this green roof aspect in the different type of uh, project. So now we really want to go a little bit further. And I want to speak also uh, with you with this facade, which was really the first approach. And the first facade I showed you for the hospital, you know, the office of the hospital, there are kids from this first project, which uh, which was really radical because it has no, it had no soil in the facade, but it is, Really, we see this as the facade, as the potential facade, as the facade that can really be something that uh, uh, welcome fauna and flora, but uh, in a way that the old wall in the country uh, do. If you see a little bit closer the design, you see these blocks, these concrete blocks that are colonized by some. Uh, kind of mountain vegetation because uh, uh, we, we we had no soil in this uh, in this concept. So and you can see here these lines in the building, which is really the path of the water. So the design of the wall is a path for water for watering. Uh, the, 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 the vegetation on it. Because this is a paradox, which is really interesting in our work, is that when you build architecture, 
you you don't like water because water is the enemy of architecture huh? the roof has always been there to get water out of the of the of the, our rooms but if you think of the living then you need water so how we can really conceive those buildings like avoiding water for the architecture but welcoming water for the for the for the for the plants and the and the fauna and the flora our answer is that maybe this facade is not keeping water on the building but it's maybe slowing water you know so that water is just going on the building uh very slow taking this time not staying on the building because it's not very good but really watering all the plants on the on the on the facade so this is why the, the building looks like this is like really the facade as a path for water and then suddenly this is another concept that you can find is that architecture is suddenly a little bit different and we like this way that playing with life, as I said first, is good for environment, is good for social meanings, because then people are acting. And this is changing also the rules of architecture. Because when you, when you place with these rules, then suddenly the time, the deepness, the thickness are some different concepts that we can use on buildings. So this is, for example, uh, uh, plans uh, for uh, the blocks we were we 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 use on the on the building and where you you can you can see that this you are suddenly designing something different that we do uh, in the common production of the office is that uh, designing for someone else than human scale and i like to show these pictures of the modular everybody knows this picture from le corbusier which say that all this modern architecture were uh, just uh, thought about the human body. The human body was the only scale of this architecture, and maybe the cars also a little bit huh, of the in the in this in this in those time. But we respect this, of course. But maybe we think right now that we have to think about another scale. And when you think about this design, this scale, then suddenly. Let's change a little bit this paradigm, uh, not thinking only at the at the perfect scale for human, but maybe thinking another scale to welcome different type of uh, living in our cities. So I like those pictures we because this this were taken by a, a good friend uh, of us, Audrey Muratet, and uh, her father, which is an ecologist, and uh, she came on the project of the school and she tried to 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 count all the different species that were um, uh, growing on the project. And I like these images of the school that is only through not people but really all the living uh, all everything that is lived on the on the everything that lived on the on the project and very shortly i will speak about this study that we had also with this uh, um, agence de la regionale de la biodiversité regional agency for biodiversity because they studied the different type of roofs uh, and different thickness of earth of soil that you put on a horizontal roof and so they studied uh, the different school of us and they tried to analyze uh, the soil and they tried to say how the, what is this trace what is this substrate what you find in this soil and what is the result because we um, what is very interesting is that now as architects as engineers as uh, as uh, people as uh, the building uh, people from the building we really have to 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 be um, more technical about this subject. We really have to understand what this is. Not saying only a green roof is a green roof, but st starting to, to much more understand the difference between, uh, there are tons of difference of green roofs. There are tons of different of uh, facade that can hold biodiversity. And we think that we really have to, 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 to be more precise in these details. 
for example, uh, really uh, study them and really, for example, this is, I really like this uh, this diagram for the, that represents the networks of plant pollinator interaction obtained for 2017 and 18 on our school. It's to show the, 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 the tons of different species that lives on the, on the, on the project. And they become to this conclusion that between 2016 and 2021, they were they, they counted 345 different species of the fauna and, two, uh, and 206 species of the flora. So it's almost it's more than 500 uh, different species uh, on the top of the of this building, which is which you can compare to a small. Um, uh, a park in the city, urban park in the city. You have almost the same biodiversity. So this is really interesting. So then, a couple of years after, we really had this uh, this, uh, this 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 surprise to see that this is working. Maybe uh, I go far on this. Uh, they analyze also the different type of uh, of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, vegetation we had, which different with the forest and the meadow. And all of these details, that's what I was saying to you a little bit before, is that are in this book that you said eventually you were speaking about this, uh, hosting life, architecture as an ecosystem. Uh, this is not only the, the only project we are studying at the office, but we wanted to share our detail in a kind of an open data with this book. This book is just about uh, architecture detail and how do you manage to uh, design a uh, facade uh, that, uh, uh, that 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 bury uh, biodiversity, a green roof. How you can connect the both? How you can really manage with this so that so that it works at the at the end. I go far on those on those images because we had also an action with Aurélien Huguet in the middle here, which is an ecologist uh, uh, we worked uh, with on the on the project on the on the on the, of the school, and then we collected different seeds and we tried to 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 um, to to replant the roof with the kids. This is also what I was thinking before saying because because. Uh, there, uh, regarding uh, green roof and biodiversity, is also a pedagogical uh, tool for kids. And then half of the office uh, spent time with kids and then tried to replant a part of the project. This is on the roof also of the school. This is Sophie here, uh, working with kids and trying to, to make them understand what the how this is work and and, uh, and the, the, the name of the school is school of the biodiversity so this is really used by the teachers to 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 make the children grow about this concept okay um we jump now to a more uh, maybe experimental uh, uh, research that we had in the office after this school and uh, this research uh, was uh, very linked to the to this um, wall I showed you on the hospital uh, the first time is how do you do we work with soil into uh, architecture and to be this vertical architecture how we created how we can create a vertical soil a vertical system it not like this green wall that you find in every mall uh, uh, which are nice I mean from Patrick Blanc we have some uh, example in Paris but they are really this um, hydroponic system with water and then a lot of chemical products and and we wanted to create something that is really close from the horizontal uh, uh, traditional soil uh, and green roof but put it on the vertical and using very few materials here for example it's concrete you will see after that we we tried this with different material uh, concrete is very bad for carbon but it's a good uh, material for plants because it has this thermal insulation, uh, thermal stability, which is very good for, for, for plants. So we decided to work with concrete, how we could welcome, feed, uh, hold, and insulate all with one material. So we tried to, we started to play with this uh, different type of concrete and really trying to layer uh, the uh, system Putting soil inside this this uh, this these this prototypes, we dis we planted them and then we we waited just to see how it could work, and how suddenly 
the, 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 the material of construction and the living is only one. That was also that is also something that is very interesting for us. It's not to separate things, to make the building and then to add uh, one layer of uh, vegetation on top of it. It's really that with this first try, we really had this first they discovered that suddenly soil, vegetation, and architecture are only one. And we had this very poetic material, very poetic things when where concrete is almost like rock and when you have this uh, mushroom growing of architecture and we have this, this different material, which is also for architects very inspiring, very, very, very interesting to develop. But this was concrete, and as I said, uh, concrete was uh, is is very. We have to work now on this uh, composite material, but uh, just now we we all know that this is not very good for climate change. So we just decided to explore different types of materials, and especially this brick material, uh, which is on the left, and this. Um, uh, I don't know the name in English, uh, monomio, which is a kind of. Uh, uh, empty bricks that is used all over all over the world to really to 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 build a cheap cheap um, cheap building. So we try to to study this and also uh, a dry stone prototype, monomer brick prototype, which is this industrial brick system that is used all over the world and this solid bricks prototype. Uh, so we just worked with the museum uh, history, the museum of natural history in Paris. And then with the School of Architecture of Marrakech, and we decided to work together to create uh, these three prototypes and to monitor them and to, uh, to, to see how it reacts with the time. So they allowed us to build these three prototypes in the garden of the museum. And then we, this is when it started to be constructed. With the system, maybe I should say a word about this, is that again, the construction of the wall and the structure of the soil is the same system. You know, the horizontal and the perpendicular bricks that you can that you need to use in a wall, you know, in French padres boutis, perpendicular and horizontal bricks, are useful for the stability of the wall, but it's also important for the stability of the soil. So the two systems are linked together, and that's what we really like in this system. So then really stone, solid bricks, and monomer bricks. And then this was after, after a couple of weeks. We had a good uh, surprise on the, on, the stone, uh, on the stone one, which we think also that uh, the mineral material is very uh, compatible with the uh, vegetation and maybe also the size of the, of the, of the hole. But suddenly it starts to work and then uh, all the, we, 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 we plant them, uh, the, these three walls, and now we are, trying, now we are monitoring, monitoring them just to see how it, it, it evolves. So different images to see the, the combination of the of the architecture, the structure. You see the different the perpendicular bricks, the horizontal one, and then these holes where the vegetation can grow, and all the roots that are installing inside of the wall. And recently, and to finish this uh, presentation, and maybe starting to answer your question. Uh, we built it for the last Biennale of Architecture in Versailles in 2022. Uh, very recently, a pavilion for the Metropole, for the Paris Metropole, in front of the, of the Chateau de Versailles, where we started the first time to, to, take, to, to take this prototype to a small building. Um, maybe just before showing this, I just want to go back because uh, the PowerPoint was in a strange uh, order, but just uh, I want to show you this prototype again, very shortly, because this shouldn't be at this stage of the presentation, uh, is to, to, to show you again this system that we worked on the on news on this project and that links this horizontal soil here with the green roof with this verticality. And so that this becoming a really a system that plans 
uh, little animals, insects can go through the walls and reach also the green roof. Then water also. So when the water rains on the roof, it's also fall down on the on the wall and then collect in the ground. So again, just a couple of images because this were really this was really the result of so of our research that I explained you a little bit better on the on the last the, the last the last minute. So and how it looks really uh, now. Okay, sorry. I go back on to my last uh, little project. Um, and on this project, I will show you also that uh, the, the the capacity uh, of the of the poetry of this work on biodiversity, and the, 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 that this can make also architecture, and not only good for biodiversity, but also for architecture. So your pavilion is here in the front of, in front of the of the Chateau de Versailles, and here you have the gardens. And we decided to conceive a circular pavilion with a with a booth uh, on the top of it. This were the model. The circular is that uh, uh, it's a it's a nice shape uh, that is also it's between classical and modernity. It's really very simple. We went to this uh, stone uh, reservoir very close from Paris. Uh, these were uh, stones, um, recycled stone from different um, uh, construction sites around Paris. So we went there and picking them and we tried and we started to design this wall in regard of the size of these stones that we found, that these recycled stone that we found in this uh, in this uh, entrepot, this warehouse near Paris. So we just designed this wall and then you see here the inside facade of the pavilion, which was closed because we were meant to put some photograph installation inside. And then the outside line of the wall, which is open and where the biodiversity will inside. And you see in the middle, the, the, the substract, the soil, the earth that is growing into the pavilion, into the wall which is almost 60 centimeters, uh, more than 60, almost one meters bright. So this was the beginning of the construction where you see the nice Versailles castle in the, in the, in the background. And then they started to build the wall. You see here that it's closed inside and then it's open inside. And then every time they put, they put stone, they put soil also uh, in, in between and different layers. And, what we really like is this is that you can play really with this pattern and you can play, you can start playing with uh, architecture. So playing with biodiversity is also doing architecture. That's what I mean with the beginning of this presentation is that we are architects, so we like to play with this and we like to develop a different architecture language by using this biodiversity. So you have here this closed world inside and in this open world outside. Uh, in the office, we designed we, we, uh, this uh, plantation plan on the, on, the, on the wall with different type of plants regarding south, east, north, west, and uh, different density. And this was after uh, first, uh, first two weeks on the wall when it started to come out and with these different types uh, of plants. And this well, this works really well because then people are, are, are going here and the site is not easy for plants because it's very mineral, the soil, uh, there is a lot of sun, there is not a, not sh no shade, but we see that the, that the wall keeps humidity inside and then that this is really fantastically working with the, with the, with the, with the project. And the roof here, which is really simple, just uh, steel uh, plates, but with this design here is also to bring water on the wall because then waterfall on the, on the roof and then use this, 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 uh, Ondulation to come here and then to fall into the into the into the roof, 
you know all these lines sorry um, i explained this really bad but all these lines is uh, you, the rain comes here and then follow these lines and then come vertically on the roof so this roof is again uh, an irrigation system it's not only to bring shade inside the building but irrigates really the wall when the rain is falling on the on the pavilion so this is inside outside and inside when you can see the pictures and the and the exhibition that take care that uh, happen inside, and this was a photography for the end of the um, of the construction with this very light wall, very light roof uh, that irrigate the wall, and this very heavy wall here. So we like also this different. Uh, uh, language uh, for this architecture. Here is not a green roof, but uh, also the roof as a, as a, um, as a, as a, uh, as a role, which is to irrigate all the architecture. Voila, I'm finished with the presentation. I hope I was not too long. And then um, um, maybe I'm here to hear your question. <laughs>